much, TJ. Thank you so much, TJ. Good evening to the Board of Commissioners and the citizens of Douglas County. We will call our Tuesday, April 20th, 2021 virtual Microsoft Teams legislative meeting to order. Uh, before I start the meeting, I would cer certainly like to engage our Board of Commissioners in roll call. And when I call your name and district, please respond accordingly. District 1 Commissioner Henry Mitchell III. Present. District 2 Commissioner Kelly Robinson. Present. District 3 Commissioner Terenia Carthen. Present. District 4 Commissioner Ann Jones Guider. Present. Ramona Jackson Jones, Chairman, present. Board of Commissioners, we have a quorum. We're going to move on to our next item. Uh, we have tonight with us in the pleasure, we have our pastor, Daryl Mormon of Old Mountaintop Baptist Church here with us this evening, and he will lead us in, in, the, in the invocation. And uh, certainly we are delighted that he's here to shed a blessing upon this county tonight. Pastor Mormon, you have the floor. Thank you, Dr. Jones. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for the people that have joined together to deal with all the issues that we have in Douglas County. God, unite us in spirit. Give us the wisdom of how to do. Be harmless as a dove and be swift and smart like a serpent. Let your power of understanding be upon your people today. In our Lord's name, we pray. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Pastor Mormon, for um, sharing this powerful prayer with us tonight, and we really appreciate you. Board of Commissioners, if you could, I would like you to, and the citizens of Douglas County, if you could join me uh, in reciting the Pledge to the Flag. Our Pledge of Allegiance to the Flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God indivisible with liberty yeah, and justice for all. Someone has their microphone on if they could, if they could move, mute their mic. Thank you so much, Board of Commissioners. Next, uh, Clerk, do we have anyone sign up for public comment tonight? We did not have anyone sign up for public comment germane to an agenda item, um, but I know there are some citizens on the line or. Um, if you are a citizen and you would like to speak today, it must be germane to the agenda. So are there any citizens that would like to speak on something regarding the agenda? Yes, I'd like to speak on uh, what you have, uh, number 13 on the agenda. Okay. Please, if you could provide instructions for mm -hmm. a pastor, please. Okay. Pastor, um, you have three minutes to address the board. Uh, when your three minutes is up, I will let you know to go ahead and wrap up your comments. And um, just a reminder that your comments must be germane to the agenda. Okay, you can go ahead. Listen, I want you all to understand one thing, uh, that this county is thriving for greatness in a whole nother way. They got great leaders at the, at the head of this this county, God is really doing something special with us. But I have to tell you this, in the midst of all of it, I have to say it like I normally say it, that you cannot let people control things that don't have the right spirit toward righteousness. When people are in authority, it has to be people of good heart. And when the people mourn it, the wrong kind of authority, but when you got the right kind of authority, we can rejoice. But this that we're dealing with, with this, all the things that we're adding and all the things that God is blessing us to be able to add to this community, you have to have guts and you have to have stamina and you got to be willing to uh, fight for what's right. And you got to be willing to do what's right for the community and everybody. Uh, so I have to say this to you, uh, 
strongly as a pastor. I'm not a politician. I only deal with what is right. I only deal with consciousness of politicians. Uh, I deal with what makes us do right. But I told you last time, slavery is over. Folk that crack that whip, they called them crackers in the day because they beat folk down for, for that, 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 that little piece of no money that they gave them, and they beat them down. And I want to tell all of the commissioners, I want to tell you, don't, don't, Kelly Robertson, Henry Mitchell, uh, Tarina, and Madam uh, Jones, you got to snatch that whip out of the hands that want to hold people back, that still want to keep people on the, the avenue of being in control of the wrong thing, trying to be the master. Snatch them all, the hearts. Take the whip away and beat them into subjection of righteousness and teach them the night what we got to do when you deal with these things you got to add. It's going to take guts and it's going to take a sincere heart. And sometimes you got to come against people that don't want to do right by everybody. So let's get that done. Don't let nobody make you stay a slave. I know some Ann don't like that. Ann don't like nobody talking about racism. And that's her problem. But we dealt with it four and thirty five uh, years, and we dealt with it all through Jim Crow, and we deal with it even today. But hear me, I don't want nobody to try to hold back trying to please the wrong folk, please the right folk for the right reason. God bless your heart, and may God bless all of you. Thank you, Thank Pastor you. Mormon. Is there anyone else on the line that would like to speak on an item regarding the agenda? Okay, Chairman, I turn it back over to you. Okay, thank you so much, uh, uh, Clerk. And again, thank you, Pastor Mormon, for coming in and um, express and providing your uh, expressions tonight. All right, Board of Commissioners and citizens. Board of Commissioners, we have next the approval of our minutes. You have the before you the commission minute uh, meeting minutes of April 6, 2021, the work session minutes of April 5, 2021, special call meeting minutes of April 12, 2021, and the executive session minutes of April 5, April 6, and April 12, 2021. Are there any additions, deletions, or corrections that need to be made, Board of Commissioners? Again, are there any additions or deletions that need to be made to the minutes? No. Okay. No. Thank you so much. Well, with that being said, the minutes stand approved. We're going to move on, Board of Commissioners. We have a total of four proclamations tonight. And uh, tab number five is proclaiming the month of May as National Foster Care Month in Douglas County. And Dee Dee Artis uh, from the DFACS, uh, who's our DFACS director, will render this proclamation, Board of Commi uh, Commissioners, for your approval. Dee Dee Artis, are you on the line? Yes, ma'am. You have the floor, Ms. Artis. Thank you. Good evening, Chairman Jones and Board of Commissioners. I am Dee Dee Artis. I am the County Director of Douglas County DFACS, and I just want to thank you for this opportunity this evening. Foster Care Month. Whereas children are key to our community's future success, prosperity, and quality of life. And whereas children have a right to thrive, learn, and grow in a safe and loving environment. And whereas foster parents, including kinship caregivers, provide the love, safety, and stability that children need in order to overcome past traumatic experiences in order to reach their full potential. And whereas Douglas County foster parents are caring for and nurturing more than 250 children youth in foster care today. And whereas Douglas County foster parents are helping birth families heal and thrive so children can be safely reunified. And whereas Douglas County foster parents help children transition from foster care to permanent homes through adoption or guardianship. And whereas we must come together as a community to recognize the important role foster parents play in caring for children who have experienced abuse and neglect, supporting family reunification and building strong communities. And whereas there is always a need for more foster parents in order to ensure the children, especially older youth, 
children with complex needs and siblings have a safe, stable home in their community. And whereas there are numerous individuals, nonprofit organizations, and public servants who are dedicated to raising awareness about the needs of children and youth in foster care, and whereas through partnership with families, child welfare staff, in public and private agencies, there is a collaborative effort to ensure that children are supported and successful. And finally, whereas Douglas County joins the nation in specifically recognizing May 31st as National Foster Family Appreciation Day in honor of the foster parents who act as the true champions for the children in their care and are helping to ensure their brightest possible futures. Therefore, the Douglas County Board of Commissioners hereby recognizes May 2021 as Foster Care Month in Douglas County and further recognizes May 31st as National Foster Parent Appreciation Day in Douglas County. So proclaimed this 20th day of April 2021. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mrs. Hardis. Um, thank you so much, Board of, uh, Board of Commissioners. You have heard the proclamation uh, read regarding National Foster Care Month here in Douglas County. And this is certainly a month to be recognized as we respect and honor our foster care uh, recipients and certainly will engage you tonight in um, calling the question. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to uh, approve the proclamation for the month of May as National Foster Care Month? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. Board of Commissioners, please prepare to cast your votes. Yes, county mission, county clerk. I'm sorry, Chairman, I was on mute. The um, the motion passed 5-0. Okay, Board of Commissioners, we have a 5-0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. We're gonna move on to tab number six, proclaiming the week of April 18th through 24th fourth as National Volunteer Week and saluting volunteers of the UGA Co Cooperative Extension Office in Douglas County. We have our own um, Mrs. Susan Culpepper here tonight. Ms. Culpepper, you have the floor. Good evening. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can hear you. I'm very pleased to read this proclamation from our Board of Commissioners. And the proclamation is entitled Honoring Outstanding Volunteers of UGA Cooperative Extension in Douglas County. Whereas volunteering of one's time and resources is a fundamental part of our country's tradition and is essential to its spirit, and whereas it is increasingly more evident that our nation's greatest resource is its people. And whereas volunteers have shown that they truly care and share generously of themselves, and whereas volunteerism is increasingly recognized as a central partner with government, education, and industry in doing the work of our nation, and whereas volunteers in the Douglas County Extension Program enable youth and adults of Douglas County to more fully develop and utilize their life skills effectively use their resources and create healthy and prosperous lives. And whereas we acknowledge the work of 72 volunteers contributing over 5,500 hours that are valued at over $148,000 in the past 18 months. These volunteer projects include home, community, and school gardens, pollinator and environmental education, youth leadership and competitive events, and Youth 4-H Horse Club. 
whereas volunteerism directly reflects the democratic principles upon which this nation was founded and that everyone, regardless of circumstance, position, or other factors can volunteer. And whereas we are seeking even more contributions of human resources in volunteerism and better application of these valuable contributions. Therefore, we wish to honor and to thank the dedicated extension volunteers of Douglas County who give so freely of their valuable time, energy, and abilities by proclaiming this week of April 18th through 24th 2021 to be officially designated as National Volunteer Week in Douglas County. And in doing so, we call all citizens of Douglas County to help renew and sustain the spirit and vitality of this great nation by committing a portion of their time to address the needs of their communities through voluntary action. Thank you so much, such a pleasure to read that for you. And we really wanna thank you commissioners for recognizing these volunteers in Douglas County. All right, thank you so much, Ms. Culpepper. Board of Commissioners, you have heard the proclamation. Our volunteers, particularly the UGA uh, Cooperative Extension volunteers have set standards. And actually they, the volunteer that they, the volunteer services that they have provided and, and the dedication that they have given so freely to our county to support the needs of a county government and also for the Board of Commissioners. We thank them and we honor them today. And it is just such uh, refreshing to hear uh, volunteers and what they do uh, and how they make a difference in our world and society. And without volunteers, we probably wouldn't be able to move anything forward because we all we need all hands on deck for certain projects throughout the county and also throughout um, Douglas County and the nation as well. So with that being said, Board of Commissioners, you have heard the proclamation proclaiming the week of April 18th 20, uh, through 24th as National Volunteer Week. As we salute the volunteers of UGA Cooperative Extension, do we have a motion to approve? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion board? We have a motion and a second. Uh, please prepare to cast your votes. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> Thank you, the motion passed five zero. Okay, thank you so much, Lisa. All right, Board of Commissioners, we have a 5-0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. We're gonna move on to tab number seven, proclaiming the month of April as Minority Health Month in Douglas County. And we have Mrs. Barbara Baylor who will read the proclamation. Ms. Baylor, are you on the line? Yes, ma'am, I am. You have the floor, Ms. Baylor. Um, I, my name is Barbara Baylor, and I'm a member of the Health Committee of the Northwest Georgia Association for the National Council of Negro Women, and I'm very honored and pleased to be here today to read this proclamation. We also have with us today our president of the Northwest Georgia, Ms. Tarita Rogers, who would like to make a comment after I read the proclamation, Madam Jones. <clears throat> Whereas in April, we commemorate National Minority Health Month, a time to raise awareness about health disparities that persist among persons of color. With this year's theme, Vaccine Ready, the Office of Minority Health is focusing on disproportionate impact that COVID-19 is having on racial and ethnic and ethnic identified groups. And to help these vulnerable communities understand the importance of getting vaccinated as an important tool to help us get back to normal and to prevent the spread of COVID-19 to bring this pandemic to an end. Whereas COVID-19 pandemic in the US has caused disproportionate harm to historically marginalized groups, Black, Hispanics, and Asian who has substantially higher rates of infection, hospitalization, and death compared with white people. 
And whereas COVID-19 has exposed historic structural racism and discrimination, which has produced high rates of chronic diseases, disparities, and health inequities in the healthcare and safety net systems that help make the spread of COVID easier in communities of color. And whereas vaccine hesitancy continues to be the historic untrust of a healthcare system which failed to care for and about racial and ethnic identified groups of people. And whereas health inequities are intrinsically tied to racial inequities and disparities which are unjust, unfair, and discriminatory that are consequences of public policies which can be changed. And whereas in 1985, the Heckler Report elevated minority health to center stage, but after 35 years, racial and ethnic identified persons continue to face significant health disparities and have more disease, disability, and premature death than the majority population. And whereas the National Council of Negro Women, NCNW, was founded in 1935 by Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune, formerly led by Dr. Dorothy Height and currently led by Dr. Janetta Basich Cole, and whereas the Northwest Georgia section, which includes Douglas, Paulding, and Carroll counties of the National Council of Negro Women, led by Tarita Rogers, supports the efforts of National Minority Health Month to promote health equity by developing an action agenda to promote justice and address health inequities in Georgia and the nation. Therefore, the Douglas County Board of Commissioners do hereby proclaim April 2021 as National Minority Health Month in Douglas County in support of National Minority Health Month's efforts to help eliminate health disparities and health inequities in chronic diseases and COVID-19 testing and treatment. So proclaim this 20th day of April 2021. I now present President Tarita Rogers. Good evening. I would like to thank the Board of Commissioners for the proclamation. And we do recognize that there are health disparities, but during this National Health Month, I'm so glad that we're now able to celebrate the steps that are being taken to bring about change. The Northwest Georgia Section Health Committee has been actively engaged in activities to improve health outcomes for all. These activities include sponsoring health and wellness programs to help Douglas County residents maintain their mental and physical health during COVID, providing free services such as one-on-one -on -one consultations with nutritionists and carrying out engagement activities with partner organizations to promote vaccinations, improve health outcomes, and advance health equity. We thank you tonight for your time and your support. Thank, thank you so much, Ms. Baylor and also Ms. Rogers. We appreciate you coming in. Uh, certainly uh, appreciate what you're doing to promote health equity among the minor minority population. And also thank you for taking the lead on improving the health outcomes for the minority population and the citizens here in Douglas County. Board of Commissioners, you have heard the proclamation. Uh, proclaiming the month of April as Minority Health Month in Douglas County. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Yes. Vice Chairman Robinson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, thank you, ladies, for the proclamation. We appreciate your work that's out there. Um, I was paying uh, attention to when you talk about mental health and and, and health equity. And um, just for the record, I, I, I got my first COVID shot this morning. So I'm sitting here, my nose is running and I'm a little bruised, but nonetheless, um, you know, I'm not necessarily hesitant, but just waiting my turn. Um, but it is important to, to, to get information out there, uh, make sure people are educated and they're aware. And so I just wanted to simply say thank you for uh, what you're doing and continue to do what you're doing. Madam Chair, I yield the floor. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vice Chairman Robinson. Any other comments from the board? Okay, board, we have a motion in a second. Please prepare to cash the votes. And TJ, I'm getting a little echo, so I'm not sure.
Yes, ma'am. Chairman, motion carries 5 0. Okay, thank you so much, Board of Commissioners. We have a 5 0 unanimous vote, and the motion carries. Thank you so much. We're going to move on to tab number eight, proclaiming the month of April as National County Government Month in Douglas County. Certainly, I wanted to take the time and I thought it was befitting for me to stand before the citizens of Douglas County and also to our amazing and wonderful employees uh, to recognize and honor them for this National County Government Month and certainly uh, Board of Commissioners on your behalf. I will definitely read the proclamation. It says, whereas the nation's 3,069 counties serving more than 300 million Americans provide essential services to create healthy, safe, and vibrant communities, and whereas counties provide health services, administer justice, keep communities safe, foster economic opportunities, and much more. And whereas Douglas County and all counties take pride in our responsibility to protect and enhance the health, well-being, and safety of our residents in efficient and cost-effective ways. And whereas, under the leadership of National Association of Counties, President Gary Moore, NACO, is demonstrating how counties matter, especially in supporting residents and businesses during the coronavirus pandemic. And whereas, each year since 1991, the National Association of Counties have encouraged counties across the country to leave awareness of county responsibilities, programs, and services. And whereas Douglas County recognizes the important role that county government serves in its citizens' everyday lives. And whereas Douglas County acknowledged the contributions of its elected officials and employees as fundamental to the, count to the community's vibrancy and resiliency. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Douglas County Board of Commissioners do hereby proclaim April 2021 as National County Government Month and encourage all county officials, employees, schools, and residents to participate in county government celebration activities. So proclaim the 20th day of April 2021. Dr. Ramona Jackson Jones, Chairman of the Douglas County Board of Commissioners, Henry Mitchell III, District 1, Vice Chairman and District 2 Commissioner Kelly G. Robinson, District 3 Commissioner Terenia Carthen, and District 4 Commissioner Ann jones Guider. Board of Commissioners, you have heard the proclamation honoring our county officials, our employees, our schools and residents. Do we have a motion to approve this National County Government Month in Douglas County? Do we have a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. Please prepare to cast your votes. Yes. Who made the motion and the second? I made, um, Commissioner Robinson made the motion. And Commissioner Guy to make the second. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Lisa, it, had, it has not come appeared on the screen yet for voting purposes. Okay, there it is. You, sh you should have it now. Yes. Motion carries 5-0. Okay. Board of Commissioners, we have a 5-0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. Board of Commissioners, respectfully, the, uh, we have had some new business items placed on the agenda tonight. And un unless there are, are no objections, I if there are not any objections, we will proceed accordingly. Are there any objections to these new items being added? Okay. Being none, I will proceed. 
Board of Commissioners, we have under tab number nine, which is a new business item. And it is authorized the chairman to execute an amended employee contract with Laura Thompson as administrative fiscal systems manager in the district attorney's office. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion, Board of Commissioners? We have a motion and a second. Please prepare to cast your votes. Yes. Okay. Commissioner Mitchell, there you go. There you go. Motion carries 5-0. Okay, Board of Commissioners, we have a 5-0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. Thank you so much, Clerk. Board of Commissioners, we're going to move on to tab number 10. Author authorize county administrator to negotiate and execute location use agreements to set fee schedules to require user to pay for off-duty law enforcement and EMTs when deemed necessary, require insurance and modify terms to proposed use uh, agreements in her discretion, subject to legal review and risk management review. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to approve? Madam Chair. Commissioner Robinson, Vice Chairman Robinson. Yeah, since, since this is new business, what is this? Um, I, I'm not certain I understand what this, this topic is. Okay, if you could force uh, legal counsel, could you explain this uh, to the board? Sure, sure. Uh, can you hear me all right, Madam Chair? Yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Vice Chair and board members and chairman, uh, the county administrator, by virtue of a proclamation y'all made, I want to say in 2016, had the authority on use agreements for like filming or use of county property to execute a form agreement. And because it's been a change of administrations and change of county managers, county administrators, uh, it was deemed that maybe we should bring this up to speed to give more discretion as to how these use agreements are operated. What is causing this one today is there is a use need for tomorrow, I think, on a filming crew for parking somewhere. I want to say at Lithia Springs Park. That form agreement has been previously blessed by risk management and, and us. But what we have found from time to time is there has to be a sentence negotiated or a schedule that needs to be changed and the chair asked that we update this so that this administration has blessed the new county manager with broader authority than it was already on the books. And so legal is fine with this. The actual forms that we use have been blessed by legal and uh, the um, risk, uh, risk management. But from time to time, there are sentences that have to be negotiated. And rather than bring each one back to y'all, uh, it was deemed appropriate for the county administrator to handle as part of her administrative oversight. Okay, all right. Uh, again, thank you, Ken. We just didn't know what that one was when it you know it was added, um, which is fine. You can amend any um, 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 agenda item. Question, Ken. Um, so as we you said, fee schedule. And I heard you say uh, EMTs and, and I guess sheriff deputies, et cetera. Is it about locations as well, rental of locations? Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah go ahead. Yeah, yeah uh, Mr. Vice Chair. So uh, essentially, this is giving uh, the county administrator broad discretion on whether or not uh, a county asset is appropriate to be utilized and the compensation needed both for the county pursuant to a schedule the county administrator will set and to consider for instance, if the location agreement was uh, a place that you, uh, she felt like because of the nature of the use needed off-duty law enforcement, the cost of that off-duty law enforcement, if it needed a standby EMT, as many of y'all remember when that McDonald's Ray Kroc movie was filmed downtown, the city made them do certain things. 
this gives her broad discretion to acquire whatever she thinks is needed to protect the peace and the public and also to adequately pay for the cost of the use. We don't really have an adopted fee schedule. We've got one that's been plenary uh, passed down over the time, including the time in which the development authority managed the location of the jail for films. And so this gives her the authority to develop a fee schedule. And in her discretion, I guess she would come back to y'all if she felt like something major needed to happen. But this, this gives her broad authority and also to acquire insurance, et cetera. Where the other one just simply approved the county, uh, man, the county administrator in executing the form that had been pre-blessed. And we find those forms have to be negotiated from time to time. So this is broader than that. Okay, and I'm glad you brought up like the jail. So when it was um, part of our ownership, I think we were used to charge like $100 a day. And it didn't, it didn't matter if it was a, a mega film producer or a, a local um, you know, person from the high school, it was $100 a day. So my only um, condition in this is that, okay, I want to know what that schedule is. I, we want consistency. Right. Right. You, uh, you can't, let me just make my point. Yeah. I, I just, I, I just want to, I'm just putting that out there again. I'm just hearing this for the first time. So I got to sure. get this out that says, um, be consistent, right? It, it can't be arbitrary where, okay, we think this group should be charged more versus this group. Or we're going to get leniency for this group versus that group. Not that my county administrator is thinking that way. But when I hear that, I, I think there has to be some acknowledgement of what what is the schedule, right? So well, what are we saying? So if you need to say there's three MTs or four MTs, that's fine, as long as it's X dollars um, per hour that we all acknowledge. If you're going to use Deer Lick or the community center or the senior center, it needs to be consistent um, for whatever you're going to use it for. So I, I think that would be my only point. Uh, it's just consistency of whatever that schedule is that that can't be arbitrary. It can't just be based on, it, it, I, I just need some consistency there so to remove any possible exposure. So that's it. That was just yeah, my one I, comment. And, yeah. and Mr. Mr. Vice Chair, I would uh, recommend strongly that there just be a published schedule so no one can ever complain. The issue about off-duty law enforcement EMTs usually is derived from the associated crowd that is, you know, we're in COVID time, so it's a little bit different, but if I would think those would be generated based on the need or the size of the population. But just so you know, the one that's on for tomorrow, that the need is tomorrow, I think the fee that's in there is consistent with what had been charged previously. This just allows the county, administra uh, uh, county administrator to come up with a new uh, fee schedule that's probably not been looked at in some time, and we would encourage consistency so we don't get complaints about discriminatory treatment. Understood. Uh, again, so she's going to come back with her recommendation on the schedule. That's, I mean, you've, you, you summed it up what I was looking for. I'm good, Ken. Thank you. Madam Chair, I yield. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion, Board of Commissioners, regarding this matter? Okay, Board of Commissioners, we have a motion. Do we have this? Okay, <laughs> Commissioner Guider. I couldn't get my hand up. <laughs> okay. And this is uh, to Kenny. Um, say we have a church, and like our church at Ephesus Baptist Church, we hire a deputy because we were having trouble with people stealing out of our vehicles during the service. So does this um, affect them, or is this a, a different thing? Yeah, th this is only the use of county facilities and I gave the example of the jail when the county used to own it. When it was empty, we used it as site locations for movies. And so this only deals with public places that are controlled by the county where the county administrator and her team deems that it is not an interference with the operation of government, that it won't violate or expose the public to un undue risk and it allows her to create parameters around what that use agreement ought to look like. Uh, that's all it is. It wouldn't have anything to do with a private place of worship or private property. Okay. Thank you. I yield back. All right. Thank you so much. Any other clarity needed? Board of Commissioners, I'm going to call the question then. 
Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to, to authorize our county administrator to negotiate and execute location use agreements and to set fee schedules to require users pay off duty law enforcement and EMT when deemed necessary? Do we have a motion? And there's more to that, Madam Chair. Require okay, have, insurance. Uh, yeah, you, you, require you, insurance and modify terms to propose use agreements agreements in her discretion subject to legal review and risk management review. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion, Board of Commissioners? We have a motion and a second. Please prepare to cast your votes. Yes. <clears throat> Motion carries 5-0. Okay, we have a 5-0 unanimous um, vote and the motion carries. Board of Commissioners, we're gonna move on to tab number 11. Tab number 11 states, authorize the county attorney to resolve the pending litigation with the Association County Commissioners of Georgia, ACCG, the Board of Trustees for the Association County Commissioners of Georgia Defined Benefits Program and the ACCG Government Employee Benefits Corporation, DBA, GEP Corp, subject to ACCG or its related entities, paying $391,158 into Douglas County's defined benefit plan for Douglas County employees, subject to ACCG or its related entities, paying Douglas County's $58,842 for attorney fees and costs, subject to mutual waiver of claims by all parties, including the county's waiver of claims, subject to the payment into the defined benefit plan qualifying under IRS rules as self-correction and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents subject to final legal review. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion, Board of Commissioners? We have a motion and a second. Please prepare to cast your votes. And Madam Chair, on this one, Commissioner Mitchell has uh, asked to be recused, so you may want to confirm that for the record. Okay. I did, Kathy. I okay. You did. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Mitchell, for verifying. Motion carries 4 1 with one abstention. Okay. Thank you, uh, Clerk, Board of Commissioners. We have a 4 1 vote, a 1 abstain, and 4 yeses. So the motion carries. Thank yeah, you, techni sir. technically, Madam Chair, it's a 4-0 vote with one abstention. Yeah, four. Okay, 4 vote with uh, one abstention. Okay, and the motion carries the Board of Commissioners. We're going to move on to tab number 12, authorize the county attorney or his designee to negotiate an extension of time to conduct the statutory meeting required per OCGA 363623 between the county and the city of Chattahoochee Hills related to the Fox Hall request for annexation into the city to negotiate an extension of time for the county to file its objection to same and authorize the chair chairman to sign all related documents subject to final legal review. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion, Board of Commissioners? We have a motion and a second. Please prepare to cast your votes. Yes. We 
Motion carries 5 0. Okay. You said 5 0. Lisa, you said 5. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Board of Commissioners, we have a 5 0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. Board of Commissioners, that concludes our new business items and we're going to move on to our business item. We have one business item tonight and it's authorization to approve the 2021 budget improvement request and amend the 2021 general fund budget. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. Please prepare to cast your votes. No. I'm sorry, Chairman, I was on mute. Motion fails, 3-2. Okay. Does and someone then. else like to call a motion to make a motion? And if not, we'll move on. Yes, ma'am. Madam Chair? Mm hmm you have the floor. Thank you. Um, is, is Rosalyn Miller present? Good afternoon, Chairman and Commissioners. All right, good evening. Um, just for the record, for the public to know um, what I'm about to uh, make a recommendation on, can you put up the original model that um, you and um, David Corbin created, um, that original model, please? Yes. And as you do that, um, be prepared to just, again, walk through what that original model was for the public being patient that there are some people who um, did not have a chance to um, may not be aware of what the details were or perhaps had a chance to speak today. So go ahead and, and walk us through that, please. Okay. So um, you do see my screen and it's um, 13 items, correct? Okay. So the first column um, is the fund balance reserve operating. So um, item one is restore 8.25% budget cuts of $1,781. Um, two is veterans court housing, which is 150,000. Three litter removal contract, 100,000. Item four is mowing contract, which is 300,000. Five is Pumpkin Town renovations for 350,000. Six is legal services restore funding to previous service levels of 125,000. We have item seven, which is the corners fencing with gate um, keypad entry, which is 34,580. We have corners vehicle for item eight and nine. And this is and equipment. Somebody needs to mute. Hold on, Roslyn. Okay. Yep. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. So we're at item eight, corners vehicle for one hundred and fifty-two thousand. Item nine is corners vehicles. The equipment is 100,000. We have item 10, Georgia Department of Driver Services site project, which is 650,000. We have the sheriff's office vehicle replacement plan. We have um, in capital 500,000 restricted funds, another 500,000. We have tax commissioners administration, $150,000. And then we have tax commissioners new software for um, 514,000. The total and operating and capital um, as funding sources is 
$5,407,283. Can say that number one more time, 5 million? 5 million, 407,283. Great, all right, I think I got it. All right, uh, Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve this budget with the following um, conditions amended into it. Um, commitment one, county clerk, pay attention. One, to authorize the county administrator to move forward with her finance team to develop a long-term capital plan that focuses on economic development, public safety vehicles, transportation, parks and recs and library. Two, to establish uh, for the coroner a supplement in compensation of $31,253. Three, um, um, not to exceed $200,000, the bridge removal from the old jail to be used at the Pumpkin Town Park. Um, what else? Um, four, to clarify that we're putting back all the operating, we're, we're restoring all operating capital back to everyone, including the elected officials, recognizing that the county administrator will oversee and have say regarding her department heads on how that goes back. And that's it. That's the motion. Vice Chair, I might need you to clarify some of that again. Yeah, I understand. That's fine, Lisa. Take your time. <laughs> we definitely will get this right for the record. Right. One was to authorize the county administrator to move forward in developing a long long term capital plan to include. I'm That's sorry. Right. That's all right. Economic development, comma, public safety vehicles, comma, transportation and Parks and Rec Library. Okay. And two was to establish support for the uh, supplement, I'm sorry, establish a supplement for the coroner in the amount of 31,000, did you say 343? Nope, it's okay, 253. 253, okay. And then number three was the bridge removal from the old jail to use to be used at Funkin Town Park. Correct, not to exceed 200,000. Not to exceed 200,000. And four was, four is the one that you're gonna have to really um, repeat for me. Okay, and what was four? Oh, uh, this is regarding all, restoration yeah. of all operating um, as established with the condition that um, all elected officials get their budgets restored, including the sheriff, which he's using who is for his cars. But specifically, as it relates to department heads, uh, the county administrator will oversee how that goes back. Okay. Take your time. Okay, so number four was to restore the operating um, budget to all of the elected officials and to allow the county administrator to oversee how that goes back into the departments. Well, the department her, her, direct, her, her direct reports. Right. Okay. Whereas electeds are elected, but department heads, of course, she has a say. Okay. You got it? I, I got it. Okay, all right, I'm sorry. I was just waiting until you got it. All right, I'm so that's, the, yep, that's okay. So that's the motion. Okay, thank you, thank you. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have yes, a motion. Yes, and, yes uh, Madam Chair. Yeah, mm -hmm. I just, I, I would just like to add to that uh, amended motion uh, by Vice Chairman Robinson that the only part that I see outside of missing is the 48 allowance. And David, is David on the line? Or Rosalind, maybe you can help with this if David is not on the line. The 48, that line item of the tax yeah. commission. 
Yes, the four thousand eight hundred for the car yes. allowance. Right, right. Let's let's really make sure that part is there because the the language within that uh, David added to the items for the tax commissioner is there uh, for the one percent. But just that forty eight needs to be also a part of this uh, motion. Uh, uh, this motion, what I'm wait, Vice Chairman Rothen, just condition basically. So, and with that. Um, Lisa, you got that, and I would add that as as the uh, second uh, Vice Chairman Robinson motion. And I apologize, um, Commissioner Mitchell. I've got, I guess I have some bad connection. You you cut out through okay. most of what you said. The, the 48, Robinson, would you explain that 48, please? So she can get that for the record. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought I was on mute. Okay, it is it's tax commissioner car allowance. Um, it's additional four hundred per month, which um, equals to four thousand eight hundred dollars. Okay, there you go. I got it. And that will be uh, for my for my second uh, that motion that Vice Chairman Robinson just presented. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Yes, ma'am. Madam, Madam Chair, for purposes of uh, the record and parliamentary rules, is Commissioner Robinson accepting that second as the clarification that Ms. Uh, Commissioner Mitchell just made? I do second the amendment to the conditions. Okay. All right, Madam Chair, you can have debate. Okay. Any discussion? Commissioner Guider, you have. I'd like to make another amendment, please. Okay. I'd like to make an amendment for $500,000 for the dirt roads in uh, District 4. Do we have legal counsel help me on this one? Okay, so you've got a, a you've got a, a, a main motion pending by uh, Vice Chair Robinson, seconded by Commissioner Mitchell. During debate, you've got another amendment by Commissioner Guider. You have to see if there's a second on the amendment by Commissioner Guider. If there is, you discuss and debate that amendment, and then you go back to the germane main motion. Do we have a second on the amend amendment from Commissioner Guider? Second. Okay, so now you have a debate on the amendment, Madam Chair which is the, the second amendment made by uh, Commissioner Guider. And then you vote on it. If it passes, it's part of the uh, main motion. If it fails, it's not part of the main motion. Okay. We have a second uh, for the first amendment. I mean, with, like you said, the second amendment, which is the dirt 500,000 for the dirt roads, the Board of Commissioners, we have a motion and a second. If there are no other uh, discussion, if there's no other discussion, please, uh, Lisa, I can't, we're not going, uh, we're going to use the system or this is. No, one of those no, it has to be verbal. Please, uh, when I call your name, please respond accordingly uh, regarding your district. District one. I'll wait till all the votes are cast. District two. No. District three. No. District four. Yes. Chairman. Yes. District one. No. Okay. Okay, Madam Chair, you now go back to the main motion as amended by the Vice Chairman, seconded by Commissioner Mitchell. You're in debate on that motion now. Okay. We are in debate. Do we have any discussion regarding the uh, amendment that um, Commissioner Mitchell made? And certainly it was uh, the motion made by Commissioner Robinson. Do we have any? We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please, when I call your district, please respond accordingly. And I'm starting with District 1. So 
Could you please respond? And then we'll start with one, and I'll just move all the way down the, the line. I'll, I'll defer and uh, wait till the votes are passed. District two. Yes. I couldn't hear you, Commissioner. Yes, I'm sorry. Okay. Chair. Yes. District three. Yes. District four. No. Chairman. Well, District one. <clears throat> I'll wait to. I'll defer to the votes are cast. Chairman, no. Check. District one. Yes. Okay. We have a 3-2 vote and the motion carries. All right, we're gonna move on to the next item. The next item is tab number 10. Hold on for a second. 14. 14, 14 I'm sorry, my, yeah, I have my documents out of order. Number 14 which is the consent agenda. Board of Commissioners, all items are subject to final legal review. We have tab number 14, and I will start with tab 14, and I will end with tab 20. 14, authorization to accept bonds from the Criminal Justice Coordinating Council for an adult drug court technology and pandemic grant in the amount of $1,445 with no match required, amend the budget and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 15, authorization to apply for grant funding from the Criminal Justice Coordinating Council for the felony drug court in the amount of $655,961 with a match of $72,855 mental health court in the amount of $319 and $319,860. $16 with a match of $36,000 and the Veterans Court in the amount of $142,719 with a match of $15,858 and authorized the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 16, authorization to accept funds from Georgia Trauma Commission in the amount of $8,667.23 and amend the fire department's budget. Tab number 17, authorization to file application with GDOT for 2021 LMIG off system safety funds in the amount of $350,000 with a local match of $105,000 to be allotted from 2016 SPLOS funds and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 18, denial of a claim for a property tax credit. Tab number 19, authorization to execute intergovernmental agreements with the city of Douglasville and the city of Villarica for the Douglas County Tax Commissioner to provide tax collection services for each city. And last but not least is tab number 20, authorization to approve a mutual aid agreement between Douglas County and any governmental agencies that use our radio system and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Board of Commissioners, that concludes our consent agenda. Do we have a motion to approve? Board of Commissioners, all right, thank you. We have a, a we have a second. Do we have a second? Yes. Okay. Second, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on any particular topic? Yes, no. Madam Chair. If we uh, could have um, Director Valentin, if he's on the line, to help us with um, number 17. Absolutely. Director Valentin, are you on the line? If so, yes, please. I am. Uh, All Madam right. Chair. Thank you. Good evening, Commissioner. Good evening. Thank you so much for being on. Can you explain to us the authorization that we're seeking today and how will that uh, impact our LMIG funds and um, what that will help us to do for safety and um, striping in Douglas County, just for the yeah, record? Certainly. Uh, the uh, Georgia Department of Transportation uh, indicated to us uh, about, I guess, a week and a half ago, maybe getting to two weeks ago, that they had certain uncommitted funds uh, that they were making available to <clears throat> counties to apply for striping for safety improvements. And this was for improvements, uh, striping and the like within roads that are not state routes on county roads. 
and it is under the LMIG program, which requires a 30% local match. Now, this is in addition to our usual LMIG funding. So th this is in addition to the resurfacing funds that we apply for every year. And what this will allow us to do is to stripe the primarily arterial and collector roads and the funding, um, if approved, uh, up to the to the full amount will allow us to do about 27 and some change close to 28 miles of county roads. Now, these are roads that are not being worked on otherwise uh, that would the county would have at some point needed to appropriate the funding to do the striping that uh, the recommendation is it be done every five years, but many of these roads had not been done for for much longer than that. I'll leave it at that. So um, so this is again an application for a maximum of three hundred fifty thousand dollars in state funds, and uh, they may allow uh, they may authorize something less. But uh, the hope is, and the expectation is that they will um, give us the full amount of three hundred fifty thousand. Thank you, Director Valentine. Have you already identified those arterial roads? We have um, we have uh, identified them, and and there was um, a number of criteria that went um, to to providing that list, and essentially it had to be arterial roads um, um, that um, were not being worked on. There were no other projects that would interfere, things like that, and that there was a safety record, a number of crashes or incidents. And uh, so the state provided us that data. We went through the list that contained perhaps maybe 100 or so roads and narrowed it down to, uh, I believe, it was 13 or 14 roads total. Got you. So there's still about an additional 70 or so or 80 roads that still would need striping at some point, but you all narrowed it down to what, what we could do now that wasn't sure. being worked on. Got you. All right. So it's something that we do need to plan for. It's something that, you know, it, it it's a need. We just kind of got uh, hopefully lucky <laughs> this time. Mm -hmm. To mm -hmm. use some of the state's funds, and so the matching funds I see will be coming out of the SPLOS, the 2016 SPLOS, so That's it won't be a general fund. Correct. That's a win-win on all accounts. Thank you so much for um, looking out for us and for doing this application, and fingers crossed that we will receive it. Thank you so much. I yield, Madam Chair. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Commissioner Carthen. Any other questions or discussions from the Board of Commissioners? Yes, ma'am. Okay, Vice Chairman Robinson, you have the floor. Is, 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 um, Director Pruitt out there, Madam Chair, Tim Pruitt? I'm not sure, but I will do my due diligence. Really? Is, are you there, uh, Mr. Tim Pruitt? Okay, uh, no answer. Vice Chairman, any other name would you like? Would you no, uh, which number was he? Beg right. your pardon? Number um, for Tim Pruitt, when talk about um, the the grant that he was applying for? Yeah. Mm -hmm. but Jason, what number is that? Is it 15 for the Criminal Justice Coordinating Council for the Felony Drug Court? Is that the one? Yeah. Yes, okay. ma'am. That's yeah, number 15. Okay, so he's not here to address it, but I, I can take it. And it was based on, uh, obviously, the previous question regarding the budget. We had the Veterans Court. Uh, money that was set aside. Um, I want to now that that has been approved and it's been pushed over there. I am going to reamend that um, one hundred thousand dollars out of one hundred fifty thousand dollars to be given to CSB, um, in which fifty thousand dollars will go to the solicitor Sonia Compton's, and another fifty thousand dollars will go to uh, um, uh, Madam DA Daya Racine for the use of pre-trial detention and victim support services. Okay, so I need that for the record, Lisa, that we're reamending that amount in Veterans Court, acknowledging that they can't use it right now. They have, they've only got two people in the Veterans Court, so um, it's been acknowledged that we'll 
catch them later when they're ready to use that money, but it, we might as well appropriately um, appropriate it. That's it, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you so much, Vice Chairman Robinson. Any other before? Okay. For the commissioners, we have a motion and a second in play. We have a motion and a second. Please prepare to cast your votes. Lisa? Uh, yes, give me just one second. Okay, thank you. Lisa, it's just oh. for that one particular item. I'm item. sorry. I'm sorry. There you go. Okay, thank you. Yes. Motion carries 5 0. Okay, thank you. Got a 5 0 unanimous vote, uh, vote to Board of Commissioners, and the motion definitely carries. We're going to move on to Board of Commissioners. Do you have any other questions before I move on to the next topic, which is the approval of our expenses? Board of Commissioners, I hope you have an opportunity to review your expenses. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, please prepare to cast your votes. Yes. All right, Board of Commissioners. I'm waiting on Yeah. Yeah. Motion carries 5 0. Okay, Board of Commissioners, we have a 5 0 unanimous vote, and the motion carries. We're going to, that leads us next to our next item would be our announcements with those announcements. But before I uh, bring on our Communications Director, Rick Martin, and I want to know if they, any individual uh, Board of Commissioner have a special announcement they would like to make. Yes. And Madam Chair. Sir, you have the floor. Vice Chairman Robinson, you have the floor. All right, is Director Tiffany Stewart Stanley out there? We're we'll talking about our COVID relief program. Yes, uh, Vice Chairman Robinson, I'm here. Can you announce it to the public what just happened yesterday? Give them the particulars, please. Sure. Um, so the Douglas County Small Business Grant Program, which falls under our COVID relief resolution, uh, the program went live yesterday. These are $2,500 grants. Um, for businesses in the unincorporated portion of Douglas County, um, you have to have 10 or fewer employees, and you must have been in business in Douglas County three years prior to March 1st, 2021. In order to apply, please visit um, elizabethbaptist.org. Um, and like I said, th this is first come, first serve, so the grants are $2,500. Thank you. Thank you, Director Stuart Stanley. And to the public, this is something that was very important to us to make sure that we did acknowledge. While I know there's federal aid that comes down and there's some state support, this is what we did at a local level for those small businesses and what some of us term a micro business to get some degree of relief. I mean, $2,500 still matters um, to that, 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 that small business with three employees, the lawn care, the beauty salon, um, the painter. So, um, nevertheless, um, we, we, we're excited about that. This is associated with our COVID resolution that was passed last year, crafted by Madam Carthen. I thank the full board for a 5 0 vote for that, and we're just going to continue that on. And next up, as a segue, part two of that is a financial literacy um, program that we'll be announcing soon thereafter. So, Madam Chair, just want, we're not one down, we got another one to go, but that is a program that people still can apply. And I say get out there and apply now because it will go fast. Madam Chair, I yield the floor. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Any other announcements? Yes, Madam Chair. Okay, Commissioner Carthen, you have the floor. Thank you. Just wanted to let the residents of District 3 know that I will be holding my first District 3 Town Hall for 2021. It will be held on, let me make sure I get this right so Christy doesn't say anything. <laughs> It will be held on Tuesday, April 27th, starting at 6.30 p.m. It will be at the Connect Douglas Multimedial, multi, Multimodal Transportation. That's our new um, wing of the transportation building at 8800 Doris Road in Douglasville, Georgia. 
You can find out more information at CelebrateDouglasCounty.com. Click on Government, District 3 Commissioner, and you will see the information to sign up. It is first come, first serve, because we do want to, um, you know, adhere to CDC guidelines. So we won't have a lot of people there, but I just did want to extend it to the public that did want to meet in person. Those people who have probably been um, vaccinated, fully vaccinated, you are more than welcome to, to come um, and you can sign up on um, the Celebrate Douglas County website. Um, for those of you who won't be able to make it, no worries. We will do a hybrid. It will be um, televised on um, Facebook on the uh, Commissioner Carthens um, District 3 Facebook page. So you won't miss a thing. If you have any questions that you would like for us to address, please feel free to reach out to myself at tcarthen at co.douglas.ga.us. We want to fill your questions. But uh, it's going to be a great night. We will have our code enforcement. Um, we will have um, DOT. We will have voter education. We will even have our probate judge on um, to talk about some of the initiatives that she has going on. So it will be a full town hall, and I look forward to everybody being there. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. I yield. Okay. Thank you so much, um, Commissioner Carpin. Any other commissioners before I yield to Rick Martin? All right, Rick Martin, uh, you have the floor. Good evening, Madam Chair, Board of yes. Commissioners, staff, citizens. Uh, to continue announcements, uh, you're invited to join Keep Douglas County Beautiful and Keep Douglasville Beautiful for the 2021 uh, Earth Day Community Cleanup that is coming up this week on Thursday, April 22nd at 4.30. Volunteers for this event will be at the Douglas County UGA Extension Office, and that's located at 6279 Fairburn Road in Douglasville. 30134 or at Georgia Highlands College, located at 4841 Bill Arp Road, Douglasville, Georgia 30135. For more information, you can email Tabria H. Cobb, which is spelled T A B R I E A H C O B B, at co.douglas.ga.us. This information will be on a website at CelebrateDouglasCounty.com, just to share that information in case you missed it. Uh, you've heard regarding the Small Business Grant Program that's now accepting applications. I could tell you that the Department of External Affairs is also accepting applications for the 2021 Douglas County Citizens Academy through May 15th. That is through May 15th. To apply or to receive more information, you can email Tabria H. Cobb again. Chairman Dr. Ramona Jackson-Jones will deliver the State of Douglas County's address as part of the fourth annual State of Douglasville, Douglas County, on Wednesday, tomorrow, April 21st. Uh, the Council for Quality Growth, along with the City of Douglasville, Douglas County, and the Douglas County Chamber are hosting the event that is held in person at the Douglasville Conference Center. A virtual stream of the address will be available for the public on CelebrateDouglasCounty.com backslash State of the County 2021. The virtual stream begins at 12 o'clock. Chairman Jones will be providing an update on the government and set an outlook for 2021, a year ahead, while addressing the cities and the county's business communities in terms of the growth and development factors that make Douglas County a valuable place to live, work, and conduct business. Moving on, I can also tell you um, District 3 Commissioner Terania Carthen talked about her town call, her town hall, excuse me. Um, on behalf of District 3 Commissioner Terania Carthen, the mobile mammogram unit will be returning here outside the Douglas County Courthouse on May 7th for employees and the public. All individuals must register using the link on the flyer. No walk ins are accepted. If you have any questions regarding this event in terms of eligibility and et cetera, please call mammosaves.com at 678-626-0342. And that information is on our website, celebratedouglascounty.com for more information. Free COVID-19 testing is being offered at Derelict Park located at 2171 Mac Road in Douglasville. 
It's a drive-through testing format, available Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., and Saturday from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. No appointment is necessary. And this is not on the list, but Cobb and Douglas Public Health will like to remind everyone to please, please make an appointment and get vaccinated. Get vaccinated. That concludes this evening's announcements. Chairman Jones, I yield back to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Communications Director Rick Martin. You ended with a perfect segue. We are encouraging, encouraging everyone to get their vaccine as as soon as possible, and to uh, we want to continue to provide education if you have questions related to the vaccine. I do want to assure you, when you become fully vaccinated, if I encourage you to uh, continue to wear a mask uh, when in public settings. There is a variant out there that is a uh, UK strain and that is still uh, very suspicious and had and is very contagious and it is mutating and Georgia is among the top states uh, right now that uh, um, that has many variants uh, located within the body of, of our particular state. So I just wanted to uh, also say if you could, citizens of Douglas County just to remind you to be uh, cognizant of the three W's Please wear your mask uh, when in public. Wash, wash your hands repeatedly throughout the day, and please watch your social distancing. With that being said, Board of Commissioners, if there is nothing else to come before this Board of Commissioners, this meeting is adjourned. And thank you so very much. Thank you.